Well, the UK justice system was already struggling before the pandemic with years of cuts and closures to the courts and tribunals. Um, the number of criminal trials had reduced by over 40% in the last 10 years and the number of tribunals had also uh, halved over the same period. And this meant that the poorest and the most vulnerable in society were effectively being failed by the current system. In terms of the immediate response, uh, I think the, um, the courts and the legal profession have coped uh, admirably with uh, the impact of COVID. But of course, it's early days uh, to know for sure. Uh, there's no doubt about it. Um, everybody's had to respond to operating in a digital world and operating with remote hearings. And it uh, remains to be seen whether these remote hearings will, um, will be in the best interest of everybody involved um, and whether they're a success. Well, the delays to the legal system um, are doing no favours to anyone. In criminal matters, for instance, the innocent will have to wait much longer to be cleared while the guilty have more chance of evading justice. Uh, in employment tribunals, uh, people's recollection of events as witnesses will be less reliable and so therefore um, it will be harder to prove a, a case or not. And uh, certain lengthy cases, which are traditionally and conventionally lengthy, like clinical negligence matters, will now take even longer. So um, for people to actually get justice is, is certainly going to take much longer than usual. And it's something that we really need to return to normal as soon as possible. It's a pity the UK didn't start in a much better position uh, in terms of it, the affordability uh, of, of civil justice. Uh, before the pandemic because our, our position probably has worsened uh, given the fact that it's a global pandemic and all countries are having to uh, fight uh, the consequences of, of this crisis uh, i really don't have much confidence in the fact that we will go up the world justice project league uh, we dropped down another place last year and i suspect uh, that might uh, reduce even further um, we, we should look at the, the scandinavian countries and uh, they are very successful in providing affordable access to justice. And I think we need to look at their models more uh, if we are to improve our situation. I think the sector has responded very positively to uh, the crisis. Uh, at the very beginning, we um, experienced a huge surge in legal advice calls. And uh, that continued uh, into the second lockdown as well. But uh, also at the same time, we received quite a lot of uh, landlord and tenant claims. Um, arising from uh, the concerns about people's jobs. And of course, employment uh, related claims have also been steadily increasing and uh, we can see that continuing well into the future, as well as the economy is suffering and the rise in unemployment, um, I think, increases. We're also anticipating an increase in contract claims, which will arise not only from the pandemic, but also from uh, the Brexit developments. Well, I think the challenges we're all facing are good examples of uh, what we need to do in difficult times. And it really does bring home how valuable some of our services and covers are to people when they need them most. So I think that's good. We've, uh, we've uh, risen to the occasion uh, in this crisis, but we need to do more. And I think we can do more. And I think the demand for our products will increase. And so that's, I think, at the modest premiums that we charge, it's really an affordable way of providing access to justice to almost all of society. Mm -hmm.